And here we are. Let's get into grammar. We're on page 13. So in your grammar book, turn to page 13. Is there anybody that's still waiting on their books to come in? Okay, good. I finally got mine. That's exciting. I'm so, so glad. Good. All right. So page 13, let's go there. Um, today we're talking about pronouns and those are the little words that take the place of a noun like he or she or it if you're talking about a thing or if you're talking about more than one person you can say they or them those types of words okay so it replaces a noun in order to avoid repetition repetition just means like repeating the same thing over and over and over again so it helps to not do that it refers back to some person or thing recently mentioned and it takes the place of that person or thing so there are many types of pronouns the personal pronouns take the place of a common and proper noun so like for megan you would use the word she and for gino and jonah you would use he to refer back to them. Okay. So boys have he, him pronouns and girls have she, her pronouns. And then if you're talking about a thing like a pen, you're going to say it, right? Because a pen is not a boy or a girl. It's a thing. Same with a book or a computer, all that stuff. So it kind of depends on what you're talking about in the sentence and how you refer back to it as a pronoun. In this chart, look in the middle here, there's a big chart here, it has all the pronouns, if you look at that part in the middle. But before we get into that, it says right here, a number means one singular. So notice on the edge of this chart, you see singular and plural. You guys have probably heard those words before. So singular means one only. Plural means more than one. It could be two, or it could be a thousand or more, right? Anything more than one is plural. Here, you see this column right here says persons. A person means who is speaking. So first person means you're speaking. It's you. It's all about you. Second person means somebody you're speaking to who's in the story, somebody you're talking to. And then third person is separate from you. You're not even part of it. You're talking about another character you're using completely different pronouns for that and then plural same thing first second and third those are the different persons for pronouns so if we read it across like this it says singular for first person this is you talking you're going to use words like i me my mine because it's all you right? That it's you're talking. So you're talking in first person, you're talking about yourself. Okay. In second person, you're talking about a person that you're talking to, right? It's somebody you're talking to in front of you, 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 your, yours. Those are the types of pronouns you use in second person. And then third person, he, she, it, him, her, it, his, her, it's, his, hers, its. So those are the types of pronouns for singular. Now we look at plural across first person, we, us, our, ours, you're included in that. And then second person, you, you, your, yours, that kind of stays the same. Third person, they, them, their, theirs. So it depends on the story and the characters, if you're, if you're writing a diary or something like that, if you're writing a journal about yourself, you're going to use words like I, me, and my, and mine, or we, us, our, ours. You're going to talk like that if you're writing in a journal about your day or something. All right, let's skip down here. It says you're going to mark it with a PR above each pronoun. PR stands for pronoun. Look at this example. And we're, Sydney, we're on page 13. Okay. The little man was thankful. He gave the soldiers the horn. It would help them. So notice PR above he, because that's a pronoun. 
and it's above it, which is also a pronoun, and them is another pronoun. So it doesn't matter if it's plural or what person it is, you're gonna look for those words, those pronouns and label it with PR. And then here it says, without pronouns to replace the nouns, the passage would sound strange. So listen to this one. If we don't use pronouns, this is what it sounds like. The little man was thankful. The little man gave the soldiers the little man's horn. The horn would help the soldiers. So it's kind of like, okay, we get it. The little man it said it like three times. It'd be like if I said, Jonah went to the grocery store and Jonah wanted to buy some ice cream. Jonah went to the ice cream aisle. Jonah looked at the ice cream. Jonah thought I should buy chocolate ice cream, something like that. But if I use Jonah, 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 it's going to be like, okay, I get it. Jonah's there, <laughs> you know, use words like he and him and that makes it a little bit easier to read. It doesn't sound so weird. All right. And then capitalization. You guys already know about names and the beginning of the sentences. Those are always capitalized, but also that pronoun I. The word I all by itself is always capital. If they forget, which they will, they, they make mistakes in here on purpose and you have to find them. If they forget to capitalize the I, you're just going to put these three little lines under it. It says, when the little man gave me the horn, I blew it. The little lines under I because that should be capitalized. Any questions about this page that we just talked about? If not, shake your head no for me so I know you don't have any questions. Okay, good. The next page is blank, so we can move on right on into page 15. Does anybody feel like reading um, the sentence today? Let's see, Abby, I saw your hand. Go ahead, go ahead and read that. He told the little man about their problem. Nice. And the vocabulary word is problem. You can tell because it's dark like that. Who can tell me what problem means? What is problem? Gino, how do you explain what a problem is? Something wrong was happening. Good, something wrong with something or something difficult. It could be a math problem. It's a difficult math problem to figure out. Good, so put a check by vocabulary because you know what that means. And just to remind you, A, and go ahead and write these in at the top. Just a little note there for yourself. Those are the articles. Malia? I need to get a pencil, so I'll be right back. Okay, no problem. There's only one article in here, so go ahead and find it by yourself and put AR. And then you can check off that at the top. And then we need to find two nouns. So London, where do you think the nouns are? There's two of them. You see it, London? There's two nouns here. Those are person, place, or thing. Um. Man. Good. Um. He. Not he. That's going to be the pro one of the pronouns. It's actually going to be problem. That's the noun here, okay? So a problem is a situation or a difficult situation, right? So that becomes a noun because it's a thing. So we've got man, which is a person, and then problem, which is a thing. But that was good, London. And then now pronouns. Jonah, what do you think? Where are the pronouns? He and there. Good. He and there. Because, um, before, or, um, like, we turned to this page, I, I already did all of it. Because I saw oh, it. Oh, yeah. Like, You've been I working. Know. I know you have. <laughs> Abby, what about the capital? What should be capitalized? He. 
Good. The H and he do the three little lines like that. And then Sydney, what about the end mark? What do we need to put at the end? <coughs> a period. Good. Just a period. There you go. Check. Man, grammar is still pretty easy. You guys are doing good. So you're just going to go through these lists up above here and make sure you check them off as you go. And that's it. Do you guys have any questions about this page? No? You can write it down at the bottom later. So go ahead and put your grammar books away. And your homework for grammar is going to be the next three pages. So it's going to be pages 16, 17, and 18. That'll be your homework for grammar this week later. And don't forget to write down this sentence too later at the bottom. Okie dokie. You guys wrote about the, oh no, you didn't. Let me think here. You retold the story about the dog in the shadow. Give me a thumbs up if you told somebody at home about that. You retold the story. Yay, good. Did you do it, Gina? Uh, no, I, I didn't do the, the, I wasn't here last week, so I didn't. Okay. I recorded the class for you, so make sure you go and listen to that so you can um, okay. know what we did so you don't get behind. Okay? okay. Okay. How do I look at the recording? It's on the Google Classroom. You remember oh. the little tabs at the top? There's a tab that says stream. And I oh, always, that, okay. Yeah, I always put the recording there on the stream. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, so what we're going to do actually is is put away a couple things in your binder. We're gonna organize your binder a little bit. So get out your binder here. And then the first thing we're gonna put away is this yellow page right here. So find this one is page 15. It should be with your dog and shadow stuff. This page goes behind a tab and you're gonna find it kind of in the back here. It says, See that? Model, charts, and outlines. Look for the tab that says model, charts, and outlines. It's toward the back of your binder there. Did you find it? Yeah? Okay, turn that, turn that tab, and behind that tab, I want you to carefully open up your rings and stick this page in there. So when you open your rings, you need to make sure to use the tabs here at the top and the bottom, not, I don't want you to pull apart at the rings because sometimes that bends there. So use the tab, stick that in there and then make sure you close the tabs or the rings like that. You should hear it click, right? Use those tabs at the top and bottom to close it in there. And then, do you have a question, Malia? How do I open the thing, the rings? Okay, so you see this little tab at the very top of your binder right here? Yeah. And there's one at the bottom too. You're gonna pull those apart from each other. So push push them away from each other. Does that make sense? No. Yeah, put your thumb or your fingers on it and you're gonna like pull them apart. Does that make sense? So those little tabs, pull them apart. And then the rings should pop open. Did it work? Um, no, I don't like, like, so what am I like pulling like apart? Like, see I, it's like here. show you. See if you can see it. See this little silver part right here at the very top of your binder? Yeah. It looks like that. Yeah. You're going to Pinch that with your fingers. And there's one at the bottom, down here at the bottom of the binder. Pinch them both your fingers and then push them apart from each other. Like one goes away from you and one goes towards you. Did it work? Yes. Okay, good. Thank and then you. You're welcome. Once you put the paper in there, you do pinch those again and push them toward each other. And then it should close back up. You'll hear it click. Did it work? Yeah. Yay. Okay, good. And Gino, did you have a question? Um, I have all these papers. What do I do with these? 
Like all of these. Um. Here, let me stop my blur. Like I have um all of these papers, like they all came in like a, like a plastic thing. Those should all, um, I see, because you just got your binder, huh? Let me show you. Yeah. So the very front of your binder, when you open it, so this is the outside part, when you open it, so you should have this page and then all the way through page eight here. That's the like table of contents and stuff like that. All the way through to page eight. That goes at the very front. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Does this one go after it? Yeah, so that's after this page right here. Yep, looks like that. Yeah. And then the table of contents. So there's a few pages here all the way to page eight. Goes in the front. And then this tab that says source text tab. So you'll have to move that one after page eight. Wait, go back to the last one, please. Can okay. Please? Oh. This is page seven and eight right here. Oh, okay. See so that? seven and eight is the last one? Seven and eight is the last one. Yep. And then this tab, source text tab. Source text, yeah. And then everything else goes behind that. The whole stack of papers goes behind that. Okay. Every single paper? Uh-huh. I mean, you, well, I should say week one, the dog in the shadow, we did that for homework. So it's it should start with week two, which is page 17. And then all of that. See how mine is? All of those pages go after that. Just in the okay, same. Okay, so. Wait, so should I just take dog in the shadow out? Yes, take dog in the shadow out. Yes. That's good, Gino. And by the way, everybody else, because we're done with the dog in the shadow, that needs to go in a separate binder or a separate folder. You all should have one. That's for your finished work. We're not going to do this other story today, the giant saguaro. We're not going to do that one. Okay, we're going to put it away. So all of week one needs to go in another folder or another binder somewhere else where you keep your finished stuff, okay? Gina, did you have another question? Uh, no, I was just wondering, thank you. Okay. And then you do need to get out week two. It's called scorpions. We're gonna learn about scorpions today, kind of cool. So this is like I was telling Gino, it's in your writing binder under source text tab, that first tab you should see week two. And if you guys are confused, you can go get your mom and she can help you right now, okay? Because this is kind of new to some of you. But we're taking out week two, which is gonna be one, two, three, three pages. So you're gonna open your rings again, take out those three pages. It's page 17, page 19, and page 21. And when you see week three, don't take that one out. Leave that one in your binder. Okay, we're just going to take out week two. It's only three pages. So when you see week three, don't take that one out. Leave it in and close up your rings. Don't forget that part too. Did you forget, Jonah? Okay. Scared me for a second there. The bold man and the fly. That was a good one. I like that one. You're going to like that one too. Yeah, I read that one already and <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so we're doing week two. And then you also need a piece of lined paper. Actually, let's get out two pieces of lined paper just in case. I think we might need two pieces. So once you have week two and two pieces of lined paper, give me a thumbs up. And you need a, a pencil or a pen, whatever you like to write with. So you got week two and two pieces of lined paper. Thumbs up when you got it. Wait, yeah. what did you get? There are pages for week two is pages 17, 19. Yeah, I have those pages. I just um 
what um like tab do I put this page in? Oh wait, let me see what you're looking at. Oh, that goes that goes behind the tab that says model charts and outlines. Do you see that one? Okay, it goes behind that. Good question, Gina. Week two and two pieces of paper. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Okay, I see that. Good. Don't forget to close your rings. That's really important because stuff will fall out if you don't. So make sure when you get those papers out, you close up your rings there. That happened to me before because one time, oh, it's it's what another thing. Um, um, I tried to take the um a little stuff out and then, and I closed it, but I didn't close it up right, so it's yeah. all flying out. It's bad. So make sure those rings get closed right all the way. Because yeah, once if your papers fall out, it's it's doable. You can fix it, but it's a lot of work. So really be careful about opening and closing those rings. They need to stay closed. Yeah. London, are you finding it okay? Okay, are you ready? Okay, good. Sydney's ready? Okay, good. The first thing we're gonna do is read the story. So go find the story in that stack you just took out. It's the second page right here. It's called Scorpions. It's really an article. It's page 19. Give me a thumbs up if you have it. Good, I see that. Put it in front of you. Awesome, yay. This is called an article because it's not a made up story. It's actually facts. It's real stuff about a real creature that lives in our world, right? They're a little creepy. So if you get creeped out by this, try not to. Abby, did you want to say something? Have you guys ever seen a, a real scorpion before? Yeah, a couple of you said yes. Maybe at the zoo, sometimes they have like a, a place where they show snakes and stuff. Abby, have you seen one before? I saw one down in Phoenix at my friend's house. Ooh, wow. Was it walking around? Um, it was on the wall. Ooh, on the wall. That's even creepier. <laughs> These things look like aliens to me. They're pretty gross. You know, they're small. Um, have you ever seen one of these inside a lollipop before? <laughs> yeah, Malia has. Yes. Sometimes like at a Mexican store, like uh, Vallarta or somewhere like that, uh, they have these inside a sucker. It's kind of gross because some people eat these. Malia? I've eaten one of them, like one of the suckers. You did? Did you actually eat it when you got down to the scorpion too? I, 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 I wasn't going to, but I accidentally ate a little bit. <laughs> Ew. Was it gross or could you even taste it? No, not really. Okay. It's probably just the idea in your head of eating that. That would be really gross. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it. Okay. So I'm going to read this paragraph. You guys can follow along on your page that you have in front of you. And then we're going to talk about it and make a keyword outline with it. Okay. So it says, scorpions are not insects. They are arachnids and have eight legs like spiders with two pinchers and a barbed tail. A barbed tail just means it's sharp right there. See that it's kind of, it's very sharp, like a stinger. There are over 2000 scorpion species. Scorpions are found on every continent except Antarctica. All species are venomous but only about 30 have venom that can kill a human. Mainly, they use their sting to paralyze their prey. Scorpions need very little air or food. Remarkably tough, they can often survive being kept in a freezer overnight. After they hatch, Dozens of scorpion babies will climb up 
and ride around on their mother's back. In China, giant scorpions, grilled or fried, are sold in food shops and eaten as a delicacy. Ew. No, thank you. I shall pass on that. There's a couple of words in here that might be new to you. Um, the word arachnid means a kind of animal that has eight legs and a body that's formed of two parts. If you've done science with um, spiders and stuff like that, there's two parts to their bodies and then they have eight legs. Venomous, you might've heard that one before. Venomous means venom. It has venom, which is poison, right? So if you get stung right here by their stinger on their tail, it releases some poison into your body. And there's a bunch of different species. So there's, there's a lot of different types of these scorpions, but only it says only about 30, which to me, 30 seems like a lot, <laughs> can kill a human. So I don't know where those guys are, but I want to make sure to stay away from them for sure. Do you guys know what the word paralyze means? Yeah, Jonah, what's paralyze? It's like when when you're stung and like you can't move. Yes, when you can't move, you can't move your legs or anything. You're kind of just frozen, right? That's what paralyzed means. That's good. And then how about delicacy? Do you guys know what that means? Delicacy. That's like a fancy appetizer. Like you probably had um, appetizers before at a restaurant. Like appetizers that I like are like chicken wings or maybe jalapeno poppers or something like that. Those are all good. But some places, some countries eat these like an appetizer, like it's special. So, ew. <laughs> not to me, not special to me. All right, so next we're going to get out your lined paper. And you can put these side by side on your table. I'm going to just put mine on top because I, I can't show both in my camera. But I want you to start by putting your name again right here at the top left. I'm drawing a line, but I want you to put your first and last name right here on your paper. And then the date goes underneath it like this, 9-25-24, just like that. So your name is at the top line, your first and last. And then right under your name, you're going to put the date. 9 25 24 that means september is the ninth month that's september 25 is september 25th 2024 and then i want you to leave the next line blank so leave a space okay so skip that line and then in the middle somewhere in the middle i want you to put scorpions like that And then, and I'll let you catch up, so don't worry if you're still writing. Right underneath that, we're going to do key word outline. And we did that for the dog in the shadow. We're going to do that again for scorpions. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is skip another line. So right under here where we have keyword outline, you're going to leave that space blank and then come over here next to this little pink line right here. And you're going to start with number one with a dot and you're going to do all the way to 10. Right next to that line. Try to make it nice and straight, nice and neat. Like that, one through 10. And then when you got that, give me a thumbs up so I know you're ready. Okay, good, I see that. Thumbs up when you got that. Okay, I see that. 
good. Got it, Jonah. Give me a thumbs up. Good. Okay. I'll wait till everybody's ready. Gino, you got it? Okay. Okay, good. Megan, I see that. Was that a thumbs up, Sydney? It was quick. Okay. <laughs> Sydney, can you turn your camera or your computer down a little bit so I can see you better? Just tilt it down. Yeah, perfect. Just like that. Okay, good. Now we're all set. We set up our keyword outline and we are going to look back on that article about scorpions. And now we are going to find those keywords like we did for the dog in shadow. I'm going to do that again for this one. So we're going to look at each sentence, sentence by sentence here. Okay. The first sentence says, Scorpions, oops, my light is, here, let me turn this off. There we go. Scorpions are not insects. Well, that's a nice short sentence for us. So I see the word scorpions, I'm gonna underline that. And I see insects, my pen is looking like it's running out of ink here. Let's see if I can find another one. Try this one. Scorpions. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Oops, not R, just the word scorpions. Scorpions and insects. Really, I only see two key words there. So that's going to be easy peasy cheesy because I can also underline that word not. And I'm just going to go ahead and circle them scorpions, not, and insects. My pen is a little thick here, but we'll just have to deal with that. So circle scorpions, not insects. And then let's copy that for number one here on your outline. So we're going to copy the word scorpions, comma, not, comma, insects. That was easy because that was a nice short sentence for us. Remember how we did this for dog in the shadow? So we're gonna start by looking at the sentence and then underline all the keywords, and then we're gonna pick the best keywords. Okay, Jonah, did you have a question? Um, I have like all of them already outlined. Okay. I have all of the words outlined. Because so. you already did this with your mom, right? Okay. You've already done this. So just, you can help us, okay, and listen. And then um, that's good though, that you have it done already. The next sentence I'm gonna have, actually, how about Jonah? How about you help us with the next sentence? Read the sentence and then tell us all the keywords in the sentence. They are arachnids it's, and have eight legs like spiders with two pincers and a barbed tail. Okay, so what should I we underline? The best one is arachnids, pincers, and a barbed tail and a barbed tail. You're right. Those are the those are probably the best ones. There's other things like eight and legs and spiders. Yeah. And maybe even two. So I've got arachnids. This is what I underline cuz I like to underline all of them first and then I pick the best. So I have arachnids, eight legs, spiders, two pinchers, barbed Tail, phew, that's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh-oh, but we only need three. We can only use three. But do you guys remember, we can use some stuff for free. Remember that? We don't have to count it. We can use symbols and numbers and abbreviations and we, I see a couple of numbers in here. I see eight and two. So we, we could use those and not even have to count them. But I think I, I think I agree with you, Jonah. Arachnids is super important. I'm going to circle that one. That's super duper important. And then you mentioned pinchers. I agree with that circle pinchers. 
And then I'm thinking barbed. And then maybe we can draw a tail. Okay, so I'm gonna pick arachnids, pinchers, and barbed. All right, now we gotta put that in our outline. But we I wanna add a couple of things here. Let's start with arachnids. Let's copy arachnids here for number two. Arachnids, copy arachnids. I left kind of a big space there, but it's all one word, arachnids. By the way, have you heard of that word before, arachnids or arachnophobia? Have you heard of arachnophobia? <laughs> Gino has. Arachnids is, the, is basically what the spiders, that group of insects is called. It's not really an insect. They're spiders. It's the, it's the type of creature. That's what an arachnid is. So when you hear that word arachnids, it's all spiders. Daddy long legs, black widows, tarantulas, all of those types of creatures with the legs that have eight legs. Those are called arachnids. You might learn about that in, in science. I do like that it talks about the eight legs and I think I can use the number eight and draw a leg and then I don't have to count it, right? I can do that for free. So I'm gonna put the number eight next and then kind of a little spider style leg. <laughs> it looks like a Z kinda, but a little, a little leg like that. Draw a spider leg if you can. That's what my, it looks like a two actually, or a, or a little Z. So just know that's that's a leg coming off of the body of a spider. So eight legs, that's what that means. And then we have two pinchers. Those are those the the part of the scorpion right here, down where it's like claw. It almost looks like a crab claw or something right here. These are called pinchers on a, a scorpion. And I don't think you want to get pinched by that. I have a feeling that would hurt. I've never been pinched by one, but I don't think I want to. So let's put the number two and then put the word pinchers. Pinchers is one of those words that just has a C. It doesn't have a CH, but it can be pronounced pincers or pinchers with a ch. Jonah? fact about um scorpions if, okay if they're in trouble they go just um hurt you with the pinchers but if they're in real trouble trouble like if there's a predator trying to hunt them down they'll use their tail oh so they have two two forms of defense is that what you're saying they can if they're not too scared they can use their pinchers okay but if they're like uh oh i'm gonna die they use their tail does the poison, the venom come out of the tail or the pinchers? Well, they um they mostly come out of the tail. That's what I thought. Okay. Because I think the pinchers just pinch, I think. But yeah, if they don't defeat the, the predator with their pinchers, they move on to the next level. They level up, right? They <laughs> use their tail with their poison. All right, we have space for one more word because really we have arachnids and we have pinchers, but we also circled barbed. Let's write that in, barbed. And then as far as the tail, we can kind of, it kind of curls up like this and then it has that little pincher thing on the end. So try to draw the tail right here. It goes up and down with a little pincher on it. That's what I drew, like a barbed tail. By the way, that word barbed, have you ever seen barbed wire before? Yeah, some of you. It's basically something really, really, really sharp. So if you have cows and you're trying to keep the cows in a certain area of your field, they use this wire that has these little sharp parts that come off of it every once in a while. And that's called barbed wire. 
So it, if you walk too close of it to it, it'll scratch you, right? It's really sharp. And that's what barbed means. It just means really sharp. So it has a sharp tail. I think I got scratched by one of those before. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I have too. It is pretty sharp. All right, looks like everybody's got that. Let's move on to the third sentence. I'm going to have, um, let's see, Abby, read the next sentence that starts with there. There are over 2,000 scorpion species. Okay, so now what should we underline? What are some keywords there? Um, 2,000 and species. Yeah, 2,000 and species. Also, scorpion is a keyword. I don't think we need to pick that one, but you're right. Um, and maybe that word over. So I would underline over 2,000 scorpion species. That's too many words, but which ones are the best, do you think, Abby? 2,000 in mm -hmm. species. Mm -hmm. I think so too. We could actually, here's an idea. We could write out 2,000 as a number right? And then we wouldn't have to count that. So what if we picked over and scorpion and species? Then we can write out 2000. So let's put over two comma zero zero zero. That's how you write 2000. Two comma zero 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 scorpion and then species that works out nicely we have our we have our three words over scorpion and species but we got to use a number those are free we don't have to count those good and then malia whenever you're done writing that go ahead and read the next sentence that starts with scorpions We'll wait till she's done with that. Oops, hold on. Just trying to make this lighter. Oh, there we go. That's a little better. Can I go to the restroom real quick? Yes, yes, you can. So you guys should have, for number three, you should have over, comma, 2000, scorpion, comma, species. And then Malia, when you're ready, read that next sentence right there. Make sure you unmute. Sorry. There you go. Okay. Um, scorp scorpions are found on ev ev ever ev every co con continent except Antarctica. Good. Nice job. So, what? Tell us all the the keywords first. Let's look at all of them. I think um, probably like found. Found is one. Antarctica. Antarctica is one. Um, continent and yes. except. Yes. And scorpions. Yes. Good. So I, we've got scorpions. And then found, continent, except Antarctica. That's all the ones that we underlined there, but that's still too many. So now we got to pick the best ones. And I'm going to suggest we don't pick scorpions because we've already mentioned them. So we know we're talking about scorpions. So what else should we put? What do you think from those, Malia? I, I think found. Yes, I like yeah. that one. 
except Antarct Antarctica. Okay. We could put, okay, yeah, I like that. Let's do that, except, let's do that. I like that, Malia, good job. I was thinking of another idea, but then I decided to go with yours. <laughs> so for number four, we're gonna copy those down. Found, except Antarctica. So you can put something like, they're found everywhere or on every continent, except Antarctica. You know, that word except means not Antarctica, right? That's what that means. And it's probably because Antarctica is pretty much all ice, right? It's just frozen there. And I think that scorpions like the desert. They like it hot. So it kind of makes sense that they would not be on Antarctica. So found, except Antarctica. Okay, next says, um, and I'm gonna have London read it when you're ready. Starts right here, all species. Um, all species are venomous, but only about 30 have venom that can kill a human. Okay, good. What should we underline first? Um, venomous. That's a good one. Maybe all in species. Yeah, all species, yeah. Um, maybe um, only and then um, 30. Yeah. Um, kill and human. Kill, human. I think we need venom too. So that's a lot. I think we got all species venomous, only 30 venom, kill, human. I'm just looking for those key words. We have too many. We can only have three. But there's a word, there's a number in here. So I know I can use that for food. Yeah. So what do you think, London, what are the most important um, words that we should? Um, Out of the ones that we underlined, which ones do you think are the best? Probably, probably um, kill. Kill. Human. Human, maybe we could draw a little stick figure for, huh? Okay. Yeah, we could draw a stick figure for that one. I'm thinking mm -hmm. venomous up here, this one. I think that was going to be important. Um, 30. Yeah, 30, we could write the number 30. Yeah. And then... Maybe that word all, all venomous. And then we could write the number 30. How about this? How about you guys write this? All, we'll put all comma venomous because we know we're already talking about scorpions here. And then 30, There's only about 30 that can kill. And then we draw a little stick figure. So we've got all venomous 30 kill humans. 
that I think that's pretty good. You were on the right track, London. I was just helping you a little bit because there's ways we can put symbols and numbers in here and not have to count them. We're only looking for three words. We've got all venomous and kill. Those are our three words, but we can add some numbers and a little symbol of a stick figure. That's easy to draw. Okay, and then Gino, read the next sentence. It starts with mainly. Okay. Mainly, they, are, they use their strength to paralyze their prey. Okay, good. So what are some key words there? What's that? What are the key words in that sentence? What are the most important words, do you think? Um, mm, paralyzed, prey, and string. It's actually sting. Oh, yeah, sting. sting. Yeah, you're right. And that kind of works. That's good because, look, we only have three underlined. That works out. So let's circle them. Sting, paralyze, and prey. And then let's just copy those. I think that works out nicely. Good job, Gino. Sting, paralyze, and pray. You know, this word pray has an E, so it's different than praying to God, right? It's actually an animal can be a prey. Does anybody want to explain what a, the difference between like a predator and prey is? guys know i see abby's hand go for it abby how can you explain that a predator is like something that eats me and it hunts the prey yes and i'm gonna eat grass and plants yes so whatever the scorpion wants to sting that's its prey right so and then the predator is trying to eat the or the predator is the scorpion trying to kill it's prey. Okay. So the next sentence is for Megan. It starts right here with scorpions. So go ahead and read that one. Okay. Sporkins need very little air or food. Nice. Okay. What are the key words? What do you think the most important words are in that sentence? Mm, food. Yes, I agree. What else? Little. Yes. Air. Yes, I agree with that. Right. Maybe not very, but the word before that, I think, is important. What's the word right here? This word, N-E-E-D. Need. Yes, that's important. And then what about the first word? Sporkins. Yeah, it's called scorpions. Scorpions. You're right. Good, Megan. You're right. So scorpions need little air, food. Those are your keywords. So that's too many. Now we can only pick three. What do you think is the best of those that we have? What do you think is the most important? We already know we're talking about scorpions. So I kind of feel like we don't need that. Food. I think food is definitely important. Let's circle that. Little? I think so too, little. Air. I agree, good job, Megan. Let's Thank copy you. that, you're welcome. Little, so I'm just gonna put the words little, air, and food. Let me move this up so you can see it. For number seven, we have little, air, food. Okay. Now I'm going to stop there for a second. I want you to just draw a line here at the seven like that. Okay. Cause we're going to stop there and we're going to do eight, nine, and 10 next week. 
but I want you to get out this, the second piece of paper that you have, a new clean sheet of paper. Okay, so get out your clean sheet that you got out earlier. And again, I want you to put your name here and the date 9-25-24. Go ahead and put your name on the new paper. So this is, we have our outline going. We're almost done with it. We have a few more. We're gonna work on those next week. And then we have a new paper. I want you to skip a line and just put scorpions right here. We're skipping that line. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with your outline next, because this is cool. I know you guys have already practiced retelling a story using an outline. Now you're gonna start writing the story or the article. So you're gonna turn this into your own writing. So the, one of the really, really important things I want you to remember is to skip lines. Okay, so on the side here, next to that red line, I want you to put a little X, just a little one, and then skip one, and then put another X here, skip one, X, just a little one, skip, X. Do you see how I'm doing every other line here? I want you to skip a line and put an X. This is going to help you remember to skip those lines when you write your sentences. So skip, X, skip, X, skip, X, like that. Okay, do just almost to the bottom, but not all the way to the bottom. Does that make sense? So you're going to put a little X by the red line and then skip the next one. Leave that one blank. Put an X on the next line. Skip that line. Put an X. Skip that line. Put an X. Give me a thumbs up when you have your X's on there. Good, I see that. Okay. That is going to help you remember to skip lines when you're writing. Okay, now, see the first X. We're gonna start under that where you skipped a spot and you're gonna use a two finger space to indent. I know we're running out of time, but I'm gonna do this first sentence for you. Number one says, scorpions, not insects. What is a good sentence we could turn that into? Who can tell me a sentence using Scorpions, not insects. Okay, London, what's your sentence? Scorpions are insects. Okay, good. So leaving a little space here, a little two finger space, I want you to start by putting the word scorpions. See how I have a space here and it's under that first X, there's a space. Scorpions, and I'm gonna put R, not insects, period. That's my first sentence. And then I'm gonna mark off number one because I already did that one. I'm gonna put a little X through it because I know I did that one. So your job this week is to use this outline. We're going to only do seven sentences. We'll do eight, nine, and 10 next week, okay? One through seven, I want you to write seven sentences. We already did number one, scorpions are not insects. So you're going to start the next sentence right here after the period, and you're going to use these key words for number two, and keep going like you're writing a paragraph, okay? So you're gonna keep going after the period and it says arachnids, eight legs, two pinchers, barbed tails. So I could say something like this. They are arachnids with eight legs, two pinchers and a barbed tail. That's a good sentence. So you're gonna use these to make your own sentences to write your own paragraph. Give me a thumbs up if you understand what I mean, if you know what you're supposed to do. You guys understand that?
Okay, good. So good. Okay, so your homework is your grammar pages and you're gonna write seven sentences using this, this keyword outline. Instead of retelling it, you're gonna write the sentences and you're gonna keep going just like a paragraph, okay? And make sure those little lines that have X's, you're skipping those. So you're gonna skip that line and keep going. We ran out of time. I wanted to show you that a little bit more, but try to do your best this week on your homework with that. And then we'll talk about it again next time, next week when we get back together, okay? Mm -hmm. Good job, you guys. I'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye, have Bye. a good one.